Martin, we are now in the bonus segment, and I appreciate you taking extra time out to, to join us. You already had great discussion on the Eurozone, the German Constitutional Court ruling. Um, as I mentioned in the show, I'm here in the United States. In fact, I'm all the way down in Nashville, Tennessee. You're in Bonn, is that correct? I'm in Bonn, yes. Okay, so we're very far apart, very different places on the planet. Um, tell me, how, how have you uh, handled the lockdown? In fact, what is the lockdown like personally for you in Bonn? Is it, is it different than we have in the U.S.? Is it very strict? What's it like there? Well, I, I, I can't really tell because for other health reasons, I've been confined to our apartment uh, even before uh, the uh, official lockdown. But I, don't, I, I find it not disagreeable because the apartment is large. There are many books. There's a lot of music and a wonderful view of the Rhine. Oh, very nice. Okay, so you were prepared <laughs> for the lockdown. You came in, you're a pro at this, fantastic. We should have called no. you up and got advice from you. Now, no. one, thing we, one thing we didn't get to in the show, I wanted to ask you now, and that is, you know, how is the lockdown interacting with the economy and, and, and the issues we discussed in the show? The lockdown has throttled the economy, although, some of that throttling has to do with the closing of borders, with the crisis in Italy, the crisis in France, the uh, problems in the US, the UK, China, all of them. So it isn't just a national lockdown. Uh, it's been a disaster for self-employed people and for small and medium entrepreneurs, despite the very substantial support given by the government. One can only hope that uh, this sort of a month from now, all this is going to be a matter of the past, which it might be. Uh, in terms of the actual experience, I think Germany has been very lucky because for one thing, we didn't have geographical concentration of the sort that you have in New York or that the Italians have, but we have a spreading of the problem uh, across the country, which meant local capacities were never uh, really overstrained. And then it came, the, the lockdown came quickly enough to uh, reduce the spread early. I have a suspicion that two weeks, a month from now, the impact of government of, of the actual government interventions is going to recede. But since we have economic crisis everywhere, uh, the economic crisis is going to last. And most macro models, in my view, underestimate the extent of the disruption, which of course occurs very much at the micro level in terms of payment relations, in terms of supply relations. Uh, and governments are not well suited to dealing with those things. Now, politically, that's going to be a huge bonus for right-wing populism. Uh, and that comes on top of the discussion, or rather the re reverse, the discussion about the Euro comes on top of that. So one of the uh, considerations that the German government must keep in mind is if we don't want the right-wing AFD to grow even more, what does that imply for our dealing with uh, the Karlsruhe judgment, the judgment from the Constitutional Court, 
especially in view of the fact that a significant part of the senior partner in the coalition, the Christian Democratic Union, is quite sympathetic to the, in parenthesis, awful economics presented by Karlsruhe because a significant part of their electorate is people who find that their interest incomes have disappeared. Oh, there's our fan in the background. Yeah. <laughs> I was listening in the whole time. Oh, that's I, great. I saw that, yes. Yeah, yeah, we saw that. I was on the phone, though. Uh, I didn't fear, but now I sort of logged on my computer to say hi. All hi. right. Well, great. Very great. Oh. Sure. All right. Well, take care, guys, and uh, good chatting with you. Thanks well, again. Thank you. All right. Bye-bye. 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 Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye. <laughs> Bye. Thank you.